Welcome. In this session, we are going to talk about masquerade syndromes and masquerade syndromes are clinical entities which are not per se inflammatory but their clinical features resemble clinical presentation of uveitis entities. So they come in the differential diagnosis of a possible uveitis presentation and masquerade syndromes can be neoplastic or non-neoplastic. The most important neoplastic condition to masquerade as uveitis is primary vitreoretinal lymphoma also called PVRL and this is the most common entity to masquerade as uveitis and it affects the eye as well as the central nervous system. It presents in an elderly age group between 6 and 7 decades and ocular signs suggesting uveitis include vitreous cells, anterior chambered cells and infiltrates in the subretinal pigment epithelium and the subretinal space and the cellular reaction and infiltrates respond to steroids at least in the initial phase but later on the cellular reaction and the infiltrates recur despite continued steroid therapy in this picture we see a patient with pvrl presenting with hypopion and with dense vitreous haze and this is another patient with pvrl presenting with sub rpe and subretinal infiltrates in primary uveal lymphoma Ocular signs suggesting uveitis include multifocal choroidal lesions and anterior chambered cells with raised intraocular pressure and lymphoma involving the anterior uvea can extend anteriorly further and present with episcleral nodules. Unlike subconjunctival lymphoma, the episcleral nodules of primary uveal lymphoma are fixed to the globe. Systemic lymphoma can spread hematogenously to the eye and ocular signs in systemic lymphoma suggesting uveitis include pseudohypopion, vitritis, subretinal infiltrates, diffuse choroidal infiltration, necrotizing retinitis and retinal vasculitis. Leukemia can spread hematogenously to the eye and ocular signs in leukemia suggesting uveitis include pseudohypopion, high femur and iris mass with or without heterochromia. Vitreous cells can be there and we can find exudative retinal detachment from choroidal infiltration. Ocular signs suggesting uveitis in ocular melanoma include anterior chamber cells, vitreous cells as well as cells in both the anterior and the posterior chambers. Retinoblastoma, particularly the diffuse infiltrating variety, can readily mimic an uveitis. And this diffuse infiltrating retinoblastoma presents at an older age group between 4 to 6 years of age as compared to more common presentations of retinoblastoma and unlike more common presentations of retinoblastoma, diffuse infiltrating retinoblastoma lack calcification and this increases the difficulty in differentiating retinoblastoma from other lesions and ocular signs in retinoblastoma suggesting uveitis include pseudohypopion which is described as white and mobile and vitreous cells. Juvenile xanthogranuloma is a neoplastic condition occurring in younger patients and can present with iris lesions with spontaneous high femur. Metastatic tumors to the eye occurs most commonly from lungs and breast and can be multiple and bilateral. If metastasis occurs to the anterior uvea, we may get pseudohypopion, iris mass lesions, anterior chamber cells and raised intraocular pressure. Metastasis to the posterior uvea that is the choroid can appear as choroiditis with exudative retinal detachment and vitritis. Metastasis can also be in the retina without involvement of the choroid but this is rare and is usually from cutaneous melanoma and this appears as brown spherules. Even rarer retinal metastasis from other neoplasms can appear as retinitis and or vascular sheathing. Bilateral diffuse uveal melanocytic proliferation or BDUMP is a paraneoplastic condition secondary to systemic malignancy, most commonly of the ovary and the lung, and it is said to be a reactive proliferation of benign uveal melanocytes. So, BDUMP is a reactive proliferation which by itself is benign but occurs as a reaction to systemic malignancies and clinical features of BDUMP include rapidly deteriorating vision, multiple placoid iris and choroidal nodules which may be pigmented or non-pigmented. So here we find pigmented choroidal nodules, exudative retinal detachment 
rapidly progressing cataracts a very characteristic feature of BDUMP and a poor prognosis both visually and systemically. To recall the other ocular paraneoplastic entity is autoimmune retinopathy which we have discussed in the session on white dot syndromes. But autoimmune retinopathy is an inflammatory autoimmune reaction to retinal autoantigens. Non-neoplastic conditions which can present as uveitis include retinitis pigmentosa which can have aqueous and vitreous cells and late stage posterior or pan uveitis such as Bechet's disease and syphilitic uveitis can appear similar to retinitis pigmentosa. Ocular ischemic syndrome occurs due to reduced blood supply to the eye from carotid artery obstruction and ocular signs in ocular ischemic syndrome suggesting uveitis include aqua cells and flare and in ocular ischemic syndrome flare may be more prominent than cells. Chronic retinal detachment can present with aqueous and vitreous cells with raised intraocular pressure and these cells are actually photoreceptor outer pigments migrating into the vitreous cavity through the retinal break and this is called the schwartz matsuo phenomenon. Pigment dispersion syndrome presents with pigment deposits on the endothelium resembling keratic precipitates and also pigment granules in aqueous which may resemble aqueous cells. Intraocular foreign bodies can induce anterior and posterior segment inflammation either mechanically or chemically. Thank you for listening.